Hey guys, this is Daniel from CNC Labs. Uh, I'm the mechanical engineering manager and uh, kind of on the Altnol 4x8 project. So today I'm here to talk about some of the engineering and you know the nitty gritty of this machine. I'm not here for a sales pitch by any means. Just want to talk about some of the kind of engineering and more uh, granular stuff that we've gotten into during development on this. We'll start off by talking about the table. Obviously, it's much longer than the original 4x4 alt mill. Got a lot more changes than you would think between the two, although they look similar. Entire bed capacity for cutting is 104 inches in the y-axis direction. Beyond that, you'll see much beefier y-axis extrusions. So these have got thicker walls. These were designed uh, with a lot more jointry and structure for this eight foot long section in mind. And then you'll also see below the table that we've got uh, some bracing that kind of comes from factory on this table as well, just to give it a bit more stability. The other not obvious thing is that the table legs themselves have gotten quite a bit beefier, just to make sure this thing is rock solid. You cannot move this table. It may as well be made from steel. But beyond that, we can talk about some of the assembly process for this. So one of the more unique things about this assembly is that you're essentially creating two um, four by four roughly sized tables, and these are both identical tables. They happen kind of in a circular pattern. So you'll basically make those two and they kind of go together yin and yang and they meet exactly in the middle. It's a super easy process that you could probably do by yourself. We recommend having two people, but it can go together in probably a day. Another side benefit of the longer Y-axis machine is that we've gone 104 inches of travel and using some of the extra from that, we've actually designed this table to allow you to recess this front cross beam in by about four inches or so. And that'll give you roughly three and a half inches of overhang for your spindle in that configuration. So the y-axis extrusions on this machine have been reworked quite a bit. They're much thicker. They've got a unique profile that allows for us to easily join these together and keep a really solid, sturdy, and well-aligned machine. A lot of these changes unfortunately mean that it isn't possible to easily upgrade a 4x4 alt mill to a 4x8 size or 2x4 just because of the kind of added cost. It doesn't really make much sense once you start swapping out things. The machines look very similar indeed, but they do have a lot of unique parts that you wouldn't quite see at the surface level. So moving on to the gantry here, we've now got a full eight inches of under gantry travel to allow you to do kind of any thicker stock like a big foam slab or a slab of wood. So you've got two inches increased from the 4x4 there, full eight inches. Uh, and then the z axis travel has also been increased by two inches as well. To accompany all that, you have a kind of fully reworked z axis assembly, which has now bracing on the sides for increased rigidity. It's a much thicker Z-carriage plate. And then the y axis plates as well are much thicker with also added cusset plates as well. The goal of this is basically just to increase our entire z axis travel and clearance without compromising on rigidity like a lot of machines might. Moving on to the next aspect, we can talk a bit more about the rack and pinion drive system. So that's obviously a big change from the 4x4. You get a lot more performance for this type of machine and what it's designed to do, which is mostly flat panel stuff. You get a lot more rapids and you get very, very good uh, backlash and accuracy results. Something a lot of people don't realize is that a lot of ball screws will actually have some cumulative error over a longer length. Rack and pinion suffers a little bit less from this just by the nature of how they're manufactured. You end up with very good accuracy across the whole table. You get a lot of good speed. And uh, the other important factor, obviously, is that we want to be able to ship this machine to you no matter if you're in Canada, France, China, anywhere. And uh, you should be able to assemble this from smaller packages. The rack was obviously necessary to do that. You can't cut a ball screw in half. And the shipping costs of that are often impossible and also very expensive. The rack and pinion drive system here uses a right angle gearbox with extremely low backlash. Uh, these are precision gearboxes specifically meant for this. And these are also set on a pretensioned system as well to ensure there's no backlash that ever accumulates um, over your whole time using this machine. Uh, they keep a fixed amount of preset tension and that's not something you'll have to really tune or adjust too much either. Fairly low maintenance, you'll have to kind of apply some grease kind of infrequently, but uh, it's, a, it's a very robust and tried and true solution. You'll find this on most commercial larger CNC routers and for good reason too. The uh, Old Mill 4x8 was designed to be kind of fit into roughly five to six packages total. Uh, depending on what kind of accessories you get, that will vary, but it'll just arrive in a few boxes, no larger than the boxes that we currently use on the 4x4 and 2x4 old mill. It's kind of in our mission to make things more accessible, whether you're a business or someone who's got a basement that you can't get a bigger machine into. The rack and pinion drive system will typically get you uh, accuracy in the range of uh, 0.05 millimeters. We've found that to be a lot smaller in many cases, but you know, just to give you 
good conservative estimate of what you can expect. Uh, you know, it's an accuracy that will usually far exceed what you're going to need for the kind of projects you're cutting out of wood. Um, and obviously this machine is more than capable of doing stuff like metals. These will get you to a maximum travel speed of around 1,000 inches per minute. And uh, obviously that applies for cutting as well, but you know, that usually isn't too suitable for most kinds of materials. It's good to have that travel though, that travel speed when you've got a full sheet. Uh, just, you know, our goal was to sort of scale the y-axis travel speed, kind of how the x-axis is. So if it's a two to one ratio, looking at our x and y travels, we basically want to be able to go twice as fast on our y-axis than our x-axis so that you can move diagonally just as fast as you can in any other direction. Other advantage that we have with this setup here is that we have moved to a uh, moving y-axis limit switch setup. So that essentially means your limit switches will now travel with the gantry. And uh, one, that makes wiring a little bit easier with the setup. But two, it actually allows you to have a front and rear hard stop or hard limit point. With our current alt mill, you'll have one hard limit in the back and a soft limit in the front. With this setup, you can be kind of peace of mind that you'll have a actual triggered limit switch both at the front and the rear. It was very important to us when designing the Y-axis drive system that we match, I guess on paper, as closely as possible to our current ball screw system with the uh, alt mill platform. That meant things like rigidity, both uh, with the gearbox as well as kind of after a reduction to our motor. A lot of closed loop motors have, and open loop motors have a bit of elasticity in them. So it's important that we just manage that and uh, ensure that it's one-to-one -one with what we know is a good working rigid system. The total rigidity of the system is about equivalent to our current alt mill 4x4 and obviously that kind of set the benchmark for you know what is suitable in this type of CNC router. For the uh, rack and pinion being a bit of a, a new technology to us we wanted to be very on the conservative side and a large timeline of this project was actually spent doing a lot of wear testing and research into that system to make sure that we get the best possible results and that you don't have to worry about kind of a longer term outlook on your machine. We've done probably dozens and dozens of specific wear tests where we've ran these rack and pinion systems through a variety of conditions, a variety of materials, uh, harsh environments to sort of simulate longer term wear, hundreds of kilometers, and we've come up with a good uh, formula that we think will work for the lifetime of your machine very well and reliably. We just wanted to kind of cover all the main uh, key changes and areas of development for this machine being the table, new gantry parts and rework, as well as the rack and pinion drive and all the engineering that went into that. We've got a lot of other videos that cover some of these topics. You'll see one of the engineers here, Ben, has a whole series talking about a lot of this stuff in more granular detail, so check that out if you're interested. We'll obviously cover other stuff in future videos, like obviously the ATC spindle system that we have here, some of the other stuff that comes with that tool rack. But if you have any specific questions about the stuff we covered, leave it in the comments or uh, you know, let us know if this is something we should cover more in the future uh, in other videos. But thanks for watching and see you next time.